friends, my name is Arpita Karwa and in this video, I'm going to clear all your confusions and doubts related to GATE exam for English literature subject. Now, I know that there has been a lot of buzz related to this GATE exam since the time IIT Bombay has released a notification on their website saying that GATE exam is now open for certain subjects of humanities and commerce like sociology and English literature. And there are a lot of students who are confused related to so many topics regarding GATE exam. They are not sure about the eligibility and why should they apply, the benefits of GATE exam and so on and so forth. So what I did was that I sat with my team and I checked all the WhatsApp messages, all the mails that we have received and I prepared a list of questions which students are asking us repeatedly about GATE exam and I thought of addressing all those questions in this one particular video so that anybody who has any confusion related to GATE exam for English literature can just watch this video and get their doubts solved. Before I talk about gate exam for english literature or any other particular uh, subject related to humanities i would like to first take you quickly through the history of great exam so that you can understand what this exam is exactly about so basically if you remember the time when we were in our 12th standard there were few students who used to prepare for jee exam or neat exam now these jee or neat exam were given by students after 12th standard and the aim of giving this exam was to get into a good college for their graduation. So if I want to uh, do engineering from IIT, I have to crack JE with a very good score. The same thing was extended further that if a student who is studying uh, right now in the third year or is in the final year of graduation wants to get into a very good college like IIT or ISCs or NITs for post graduation they have to clear another entrance exam which is GATE. GATE stands for General Aptitude Test for Engineering. So basically this exam was meant for engineering students who want to do their masters from IIT. Suppose a student who wanted to do graduation BTEC from IIT was not able to clear JE exam. He went to some uh, small or not so well renowned college for graduation. Now still he wants to do his masters from IIT. So what he is going to do in the third year of his graduation, he is going to sit for GATE exam. And once he get a good score in GATE, he gets an all India ranking, he will then apply and uh, be a part of master's program of IIT or NIT. So this was the process which was uh, seen very widely in India so far. Now what has happened is that IIT Bombay has taken an initiative and has opened up GATE exam for certain humanity subjects like English literature, psychology, sociology. So now if a candidate who is in his graduation wants to pursue master's from IIT in English literature can sit for this exam, can give this exam, can get a good score and finally admit himself into a good college for masters. So this is how GATE exam will now be seen in the field of humanities. Now that you know what GATE exam is all about and how GATE exam is now a part of even humanities subject, it is time to look at certain questions which might pop up inside your head whenever you think about GATE exam. So the first important questions that students generally ask me is that what is the age limit of GATE exam? Surprisingly, there is no age limit for GATE exam. You can sit for the GATE exam at any age even if you are 40 or 45 or 50 years you can sit for gate exam the an important criteria here is that though there is no age limit but there is minimum eligibility now what is the minimum eligibility to sit for gate exam minimum eligibility is that you must be in the third year of your graduation that is the final year of your graduation if you are in the first or second year of your graduation you're not eligible to sit for gate exam if you are in third year of graduation or any higher class like master's first year master's final year if you are doing PhD or if you have graduated and you are working somewhere, you are eligible to sit for GATE exam. So 
you know this actually creates a lot of flexibility in the system because even if a person has not done a post graduate degree he can give gate exam and even if the person has done a post graduate degree he can give gate exam so there is a lot of flexibility and a lot of scope in case of gate exam another important question which might pop up in your head is that what is the exam date for the next gate exam so the uh, date announced by iit bombay is in the month of february 2021 but because of the corona pandemic they say that the dates are flexible and they the dates might even change another interesting questions that students ask me is that what is the mode of the examination so the mode of exam is online the exam is a cbt or what we commonly know as a computer based test so just like we have our net exam where we have a computer screen and questions are flashed on the screen we have to choose the correct answer then and there on the computer screen just like that gate exam is conducted next question that you might ask me is the paper pattern so the paper pattern is also very similar to net exam so in net exam you have two papers paper 1 and paper 2 paper 1 is a general paper and paper 2 is a subject specific paper where you have 100 questions in line similar to that is the gate exam here you don't have paper 1 you just have one paper that is the subject specific paper which consists of 100 objective questions so uh, the paper is entirely objective and you have mcqs um, as a part of the question paper another interesting thing that uh, you might know or you might want to know is the validity of this exam so the exam is valid for a period of 3 years or you can say that your score card the all india ranking that you're going to get is going to be valid for a period of 3 years so in this period of 3 years you can apply anywhere for your masters but once this 3 years period has lapsed then the gate exam uh, score card will not be valid anymore just like we have in case of our jrf so the jrf award letter is valid for a period of 2 years you can apply for phd and you can get a stipend if you apply within that period of 2 years similar to that is the gate score card validity which is valid for a period of 3 years so even if you are not very sure whether you would like to give gate exam or not don't skip the next part of the video where i'm going to talk about the benefits of giving gate exam because i'm pretty sure that these benefits are going to lure you uh, so much that you will definitely think of sitting for gate exam at least once and giving it at least one shot if you want to take up a job right after your graduation then let me tell you my friends gate is very big boon for you because gate provides you with job opportunities in public sector undertakings like power grid iocl all these companies take up candidates hire candidate based on their gate score but what if you don't want to you know take up a job or you want to study further you want to pursue your masters even in that case gate is your very good friend because the most prominent colleges like iits nits iiscs all of these colleges they take masters admission based on your gate score so if you have a very good gate score then it becomes very easy for you to get into these big colleges like du jnu or iits for that matter and at times there are certain colleges where the gate score card is used even in order to take phd admission so be it further education or be it job gate score card is going to be a very big achievement for you and is going to add to your cv to your resume apart from that what is very beneficial about gate is that suppose you are a candidate who has uh, done his graduation in the field of uh, science and now wants to study literature english literature wants to do masters in english literature you don't have interest in science anymore 
what you can do is that you can give gate exam in english literature even after doing your graduation from uh, science stream and once you have the gate scorecard you can apply in any university any college across india for your masters in english literature so the gate scorecard is your wild card entry to any college for any particular subject even if you've studied uh, commerce say bcom uh, you have done in your graduation and now you want to switch to sociology give the gate exam and you can now enroll as a student of masters of sociology so this is the beauty behind gate exam another important thing that you must remember in regards to gate exam is that it doesn't matter if you've done your graduation from distance gate exam can be given by students who have done their graduation from distance learning as well so because of family pressure or some family responsibilities if you were not able to go to a regular college you had to take up you know distance learning degree if you have gate card with you the gate score card with you you can add value to your cv in spite of the fact that distance learning tag is associated with you so this is what gate can give you i'm pretty sure that you know gate exam uh, benefits are going to definitely charm you lure you so that you start preparing for the upcoming gate exam right from today and i'm pretty sure that you're going to nail it now it's time to look at the syllabus of english literature gate exam and see whether the syllabus is similar to net or dissimilar to net before i talk about the syllabus of gate for english literature i would like to point out two myths that people are nowadays uh, talking about the first myth related to gate exam in english literature is that gate is tougher than net exam let me tell you friends if you use your common sense you will be able to find out the difference between gate and net gate exam is given by students who have completed their graduation or are in the third year of their graduation whereas net exam is given by students who are either in the final year of their post graduation or have completed their post graduation it's simple net is tougher than gate exam because if i ask you that there's a student from 10th standard and there is a student from 12th standard whose question paper is more difficult definitely the question paper of 12th standard is difficult than the question paper of 10th standard because it is uh, prepared for a person who is 2 years elder to the 10th standard student similarly gate exam is given by graduates whereas net exam is given by post graduate so net exam syllabus is more exhaustive there are people who are saying that gate mein negative marking hai to exam zyada tough hai let me tell you friends net mein negative marking nahi hai but aaj bhi sare bacche net exam nahi clear kar pate hain why because एग्जाम में नेगेटिव मार्किंग हो चाहे नहीं हो अगर आपके कॉन्सेप्ट क्लियर नहीं है अगर आपने सही ढंग से पढ़ाई नहीं करी है तो आप स्कोर कर ही नहीं पाओगे और अगर आपने ढंग से पढ़ाई करी है तो चाहे नेगेटिव मार्किंग हो या नहीं हो आप क्लियर कर दोगे बिकॉज अगर आपको आंसर आता है तो आप करेक्ट मार्क करोगे अगर नेगेटिव मार्किंग है तो भी अगर आपको आंसर आता है तो भी आप करेक्ट ही मार्क करोगे सो नेगेटिव मार्किंग डजेंट मेक अ एग्जाम मोर टफ also at the same time another myth that i am hearing from a lot of students these days is that the syllabus of net and gate are different guys before believing on any of these myths please go and check and compare the syllabus of net and gate i actually sat down with the syllabus of net and gate together and i cross checked both the syllabus and i found that both of them are exactly similar if you look at the net syllabus and the gate syllabus which is displayed on the screen right now you will find out that the gate syllabus includes all the topics of net syllabus but there are certain topics in the net syllabus which are not a part of gate syllabus but there is no topic in the gate syllabus which is not a part of net syllabus like if you look at history of english literature both of these exams have that poetry fiction non fiction short stories both the exams have that literary theory and criticism both the exams have that then you have research methodology both the exams have that and then you have other literatures uh, like indian literature and post colonial and world literature uh, both the exams have that 
but at the same time if you look at cultural studies it is a part of net exam but not a part of gate exam so if you look at both the syllabus you will find out that if you've prepared for net exam you can very easily clear each and every question of gate exam because we all know this net exam syllabus is extremely exhaustive net exam includes anything that is written or translated in english all over the world there is nothing more to english literature than what we are studying in net exam so if there's nothing more in the field of english literature then how come something new pop up in the gate exam so before believing into any of these myths please apply your common sense and compare the syllabus yourself and then see we are really proud to tell you that our course for ugc net english literature is self sufficient for gate exam and for all the other competitive exams specifically uh, asking questions from the field of english literature because our course is so exhaustive and so detailed that it covers each and every topic that can be asked in any of these competitive exams if you look at the gate syllabus you will find out that our online course modules the 13 module structure that we are displaying free of cost on our website covers each and every topic that is a part of gate exam syllabus So with that note I come to an end I hope I was able to clarify each and every confusion that students are facing these days related to gate exam if you have any other doubts any other questions feel free to put your questions on the whatsapp number displayed above or you can even put that in the comment section below apart from that don't forget to subscribe to this channel because we are going to update you very soon about another important uh, examination coming your way so that it from my side for this video lecture we'll meet soon in the next video lecture till the time we meet next happy learning keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarwa.com